yellow stickies. Uh, I feel like that's a must mm-hmm. on all of my plants nowadays is to put the yellow stickies. That is a form of preventative, right? Um, sprays. I've been doing essential oil sprays, rosemary, peppermint. Um, those are two, kind of the two main ones that I've been going to recently. You can also do like lavender and there's other ones that you can use, but I usually do like 32 ounces of water, just a little smidge of Dr. Bronner soap as a surfactant. And then like five drops of either peppermint or rosemary or whatever I'm using at the time. So I'll spray that. Neem oil gets sprayed once in a while in my garden. Typically every week I'll do a spray every week, week and a half. I haven't been doing sprays for many, many years. I didn't do sprays. Most recently I have been going back to these sprays as a preventative because as those of you who have been tuning into my garden recently know that my last grow I had fungus gnats and uh, they are a pain in the ass to battle. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to incorporate more and more IPM type stuff, but yeah, just, I actually, (laughs) I don't go directly outdoors, indoors. That's a common tip that people, people talk about. Right. Um, I also clean the grow room between grows. And also when I flip the flowers, sometimes I do a cleaning of my grow grow room as well. So those are just some things I can think of top of my head, which is like IPM and things I do to prevent pests. What about you? Rob. Well, I jumped in midway through because my kids are out there breaking shit again. But, uh, you know, when it comes to IPM, for me, what I'm realizing, obviously, cleanliness is the biggest thing. But preventative measures is is got to be first and foremost, man, because I know people who've never, ever ran into shit in 10 years of growing. They've never ran into shit. But I also have never been to their garden. I don't let anybody in that motherfucker. Just them. So it's like, and those are the ones who are a little over paranoid, but I kind of understand for that exact reason, you know, anybody could be outside in nature and bring something in with them and not realize it. And especially if you're dealing with like a female or a person with long hair and stuff's in their hair and they go into the garden or their clothing, you know, the issue I have is my mom goes to a community garden. She has, you know, plants in there and she deals with stuff there and outside too. And then when I was gone, she's my patient. So I said, Hey, can you take care of business for me here? She's not thinking anything of it. Cause why would she, she cleaned, she changed her shirt, you know, everything should be good, but at some point, some cross contamination can happen because that preventative measure wasn't put in place in terms of not letting people go in there or making sure that, you know, hair net on or something. You go into a lot of commercial grows and you'll see hair nets on people and they're wearing scrubs and stuff because you really got to make sure you don't contaminate the garden at all. Once it's there, that's when you got to get things like potentially sprays or, um, you know, if it's, if it's IPM, yeah, it's going to deal with more of a, some sort of actual spray or like wettable sulfur or, I've seen people use like uh, sulfur burners too, but I'm not a huge fan of of going that route. You guys, I've ever only yeah, I've only out? seen the sulfur burn as a, a it, it as, as a reactionary, uh, not as a yeah. preventative. Um, so I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Doggo the Hut did a sulfur burn a few years back in his greenhouse and completely gassed the thing out. Um, is one example. Uh, I, I actually spray quite regularly as a, as an IPM. Um, I do, uh, only about every three weeks and I alternate between rosemary, peppermint and neem oil. Um, neem oil, in my opinion, I just want to touch on it because when people hear that, they start screaming, uh, or they, they think that it's just the worst substance ever and it, it's, it, it leads to hypermesis, uh, syndrome or camp can cannabis allergic to weed syndrome. syndrome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and essentially that, that allergic to weed syndrome is essentially an, in, in, in an abundance or an intoxic, uh, an um, oh shit. Help me out here. It's, it's a, an abundance of the neem oil in your system. I don't know how to, yeah, I don't know like the actual term. Allegedly, but some of that I've been it's, seeing as being one of those like cause and effect. They're kind of, uh, well, it, it, the science is the science is there. Uh, it's it, 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 it's yeah, the, it's kind of debunked. So this is one of those ones that's like been put out there. Is is the I feel like the assumption was that it was this versus the actual science behind it being this. It was more just discussed as it wasn't a full controlled test. But people ran with this, just like people run with forty eight hours of darkness. Hundred percent. People run with a the, lot of the, the crazy bro science things. Intoxication to pesticides is is an issue, um, yeah. and and there's there's plenty of science to uh, a point to 
the idea that people are being poisoned by their product and it's because of pesticides. And neem oil gets lumped into that because of this this running with this cannabis hypermesis syndrome. Um, and so and, and, and there's a mi- and there's so many other variables uh, when it comes to this allergic to weed syndrome, if you will. Uh, but anyways, uh, I digress. So when I touch on neem, it's important that you use it like anything properly. You don't use any pesticide or anything in flour. I, and I don't care what the product says. There, like I honestly don't. I don't. I wear a tinfoil hat around this. There are products out there that 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 claim that you can use their product through flour without any kind of without any kind of negative repercussion. I I I disagree with that, and I don't understand how anyone can get away with that. But I'm just a, I'm just a grunt. Um, so between. Pe- uh, peppermint, neem, and rosemary. I alternate between the three approximately every three weeks. I'll do a full plant spray. This FDS clip was brought to you by AC Infinity, leaders in garden innovation. Use discount code the stash 15 at checkout to save some money on your order. From the Stash Podcast.